Good morning, good afternoon, good night. I'm Black Pike and I'm broadcasting out of the east of England and I seem to have developed another cough or cold or whatever you want to call it. So my throat is a bit tickly, so excuse me if I'm coughing and spluttering. Hopefully I won't do that um, throughout the duration of the video. Anyway, um, the reason why I entitled this video the way I did is because I was looking at um, George Carlin on TikTok. And he was kind, you know, at the time I didn't know he was a comedian, but even though he's a comedian, what he talks about is, has an element of influence. They say they reckon he's one of the most influential comedians. So, um, so what he says carries some clout. And I think, I guess because I come from a Christian background and, um, I kind of found it a bit wishy-washy. I found the video, I'm putting it in the link, but I found it a bit frivolous. I think that's the best way to describe it. Um, he was talking about the Ten Commandments and he was saying that you could break it down. He reckons that it's a marketing tool, that they've used the word Ten Commandments, these philosophers of 5,000 years ago, used... Um, the number 10 as a marketing tool because it's very is a is psychologically acceptable or satisfying he spoke about top 10 he spoke about um uh, the 10 top um fashion designers and you know 10 as in decade and 10 as in the start of the decimal system but the thing is those weren't around 5000 years ago the decimal system wasn't around five years ago, and nor was top 10 as we know it. So I don't see how he could make that analogy when it's, he's kind of putting together pears and apples. That's the way I see it. Anyway, he was kind of um, saying that we don't need 10 commandments. Um, we only need two because it's duplicitous. You know, you can say... Um, that when you're kind of talking about um, infidelity and um, not um, lying against your neighbour and stuff like that, he's saying it all comes under dishonesty. And um, he spoke about do not kill. Well, one of kill is one of the ones he decided to keep, one of the commandments he decided to keep. But he said everything else goes under dishonesty and unfaithfulness. So um, you only need two commandments. Basically, that's what he's saying. My point is, is that the Bible is like legislation. You can't just give it a blanket statement. There's so many sub factors involved, so many technicalities. You can't just say, well, not that you can't. It's um, not accurate to just stick everything under the same umbrella, under dishonesty, because we have different levels of dishonesty and we have different levels of infidelity. So um, anyway, that is the background to this video. If it's the first time you're passing, you can click the like button, the subscribe button, you can share, you can comment, all that kind of stuff. Um, so like I said, the source is George Carlin regarded as one of the most influential comedians of all time and dubbed the Dean of Counterculture Comedians. In his TikTok videos, he shares his opinion on the Ten Commandments, believing they have been deliberately and artificially inflated to get the commandments up to ten and that we do not need all of them. He concludes that 5,000 years ago, some philosophers created the Ten Commandments to keep people in line, keep people under control, and that the number 10 was a marketing decision. He reckons that the, two, the Ten Commandments can be broken down into two commandments. Thou should always be honest and faithful, and thou shalt not kill. The thing is, is that when he's talking about the Ten Commandments are designed to control, what isn't? So what's new? Isn't legislation designed to control? There's no difference. So I think to minimise the content is 
it's not it's not um I don't want to use the word fair. It's it's um kind of ridiculing what could be beneficial to some people. Um he claims that number ten, the number ten sounds official. He says eleven commandments um wouldn't sound right. Um he said it's the basis, like I said, of the decibel system. It's a decade and used to be psychologically satisfying. The issue I have is that George Carlin has not taken into consideration that biblical times there was no decimal system, as I said before, nor the 10 top best dressed people. You know, I do understand that now we use it quite a lot, top 10. I use it when I'm DJing the top 10 tracks or the top 10 promoters, that kind of stuff. But back in the day, it was totally different. So I don't see how he can compare the two. Um, he, he is a comedian, so the skit is meant to be funny. I didn't find it funny. I think the sleeping massive will think that he's making sense. And a lot of people will look at it and listen and think, yeah, what he's saying makes sense. Why not just have two? It does sound like um, the Ten Commandments are being duplicated. And in some sense, I can understand why it's like that. But each, it's like if you tell a lie, you can tell a lie um, and it's because you want to surprise somebody. So you know that your wife wants to, is going out and you say to her, look, don't go out, babes, because I, 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 don't, I don't feel well. Or, you know, I've got to do something. I've got to go somewhere and I need you to come with me. You're not going to tell your wife that it's a surprise party. Similarly, if you're going to tell a lie on someone and it's going to get them thrown in prison or killed then you've got you've got the two extremes of what a lie can do so you can't just put it under one umbrella and that's why the law when they're talking about imprisonment it could be a minor offense or it could be a major offense a minor offense would give you six months to a year a major offense could give you life so it's that that is the premise from which i'm coming from so i don't know if it makes sense so while George claims that it is about control, I'm inclined to believe that the Ten Commandments are about order. And I happen to believe in a higher force. So the first commandment, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. George, I call him GC. He calls this commandment rubbish. But this is about idolatry idolizing money, idolizing superstars, losing focus on what is important. Now, if you're looking at it literally, or, you know, the words that are written, it might sound as though it's outdated. It might sound um, um, like, as, like he says, irrelevant, rubbish. But you have to widen your vision and your wisdom when you're reading certain things. Not everything is written um in a way that is obvious. Sometimes you have to kind of see how things can apply to you in this day, in this current time. So the other one was honour thy mother and thy father so your days will be long. What he's saying is that um, it's about respect and it's about um, <clears throat> honouring and respecting your parents. And he's saying that some parents don't deserve to be honoured. They don't deserve to be respected depending on their behaviour. He believes that um, honour and respect needs to be earned. So he's wiped that one out. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy? He calls that rubbish. But this is about not overworking. It's about understanding your limits. It's about giving yourself a break. Some people are relentless, especially in America. They have two or three jobs. They do not stop. What he's saying is, take a break. Take time out. That's all it's saying. There's nothing wrong with that. He said, and I don't think that's rubbish. It's, it's good for your health to take a break. He says, thou sh well, he missed this one. Um, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Um, that is about uh, <coughs> carving something out, 
sitting and worshipping images, paintings or whatever. You see these people with Christ or a cross and they're kneeling before and worshipping. That is idolatry again. And what, you're imp what it implies is that when you bow down to something like an object, you're saying that that object is more superior than you are. That is not how it's meant to be. It's love thyself first. You love God and then you love yourself. These, to be idolatrous is not good for your well-being. It's not good for your self-esteem. It's putting you below of what you are. So then they have, thou should not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. GC calls that rubbish. This and um, But this is about being frivolous with people's names. God is saying, don't take my name in vain. But how many times have you had people, well, I, I know that they say something in America about calling me out of my name. But how many times have you had somebody call your name and they, they're just, you know, they're going around and spreading news about your name. and It's got no um, merit and you get frustrated. You get frustrated, probably, I know I do, if somebody pronounces my name wrongly or they spell it wrong. Not that I'm going to make a big deal out of it, but I'm going to ask them to correct it and I'm going to try to make them pronounce my name properly. My name is a funny name. It's got a Y in it, so you wouldn't think it sounds like Myrna. But, you know, so I sometimes have to correct it because they call me Myrna and they call me Mur um, Mur Mona and all kinds of things. And it's frustrating. I don't want to respond to Mona. I don't want to respond to Myrna. So all I'm saying is that, you know, names are sensitive. Your name is sensitive. How people pronounce your name is sensitive. Likewise, the superior being, when you address him, him, you address him properly and appropriately. So the next one was, thou shalt not kill. He decided to keep this one because he says, even though he says, he claims more people have been killed in the name of God than anything else. But does that make it right? Um, he, he cites Northern Ireland, Middle East, Kashmir, the Twin Towers, the Inquisition, the, Inquisition, the Crusades. Interestingly, he doesn't mention the Holocaust. He doesn't mention 130 million killed in the Western Hemisphere between 1491 and 1691. Nor does he mention the 100,000 Indian soldiers who were slaughtered, slaughtered according to Amaresh Mishra, a historian based in Mumbai, which caused the death, um, the war of civilization, which caused the death of 10 million people over 10 years beginning 1857. That's just because they dared to challenge the British forces. So to cite death because of religion and say, you know, it, um, thou shalt not kill people, kill in the name of death more than anything else. That's not true. People kill because of power and greed more than anything else, not because of religion. Well, that's my opinion. Um, power, control, and greed normally kills why people kill. Um, <clears throat> Thou shalt not commit adultery. He reckons that adultery can be swept under the banner um, of dishonesty and unfaithfulness. But we all know that there's different levels of dishonesty and adultery. It's like saying you should be fined for the same thing if you jump a light. Be fined the same amount if you jump a light than if you um, kill somebody accidentally in your car. It's like making the diff it's like saying um, you're in the Bible it says even the thought of someone else is adultery. So that's like saying you're gonna be um, guilty of the the slightest um, temptation with somebody else or actually carrying it out. They both carry equal weight. So it's not just about, you can't just put it under unfaithfulness or dishonesty because it's got different levels. Thou shalt not steal. He reckons this can go, this can be um, under a commandment called thou shalt not be dishonest. Um, <clears throat> because it's a, but the thing is, um, no, 
Oh, this one is. Thou shalt not steal. Okay. He reckons this can go under dishonesty, and perhaps it can, but taking a longer lunch break than you should is being dishonest. But it doesn't carry the same weight of stealing from someone, someone's house, from someone's car, from anywhere. It, it doesn't carry the same weight. But he reckons it all goes under dishonesty, and perhaps it could. I mean, if it's blanket. But maybe you can put under dishonesty. Maybe you don't have to break it down into all these different um, particles and say that, oh, there's different levels of dishonesty. Maybe it is just as long as you're dishonest, as long as you're unfaithful, and as long as you kill. Those are the three commandments that are required. Maybe it's enough. Um, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbour. Once again, he says, that can go under dishonesty because it's about telling lies. But like I said, um, it seems like it's a duplicitous one. I've, I've said that before. But it is about telling lies. So he might have a point in the sense that he reckons it's been padded out um, to create some kind of... Um, yeah, well, really, he's saying it's to instill control. So, and thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's goods. Juicy says that coveting what people have keeps the economy going and creates jobs. However, coveting also leads to dissatisfaction, it leads to depression, it leads to robbery, and it can lead to murder. So those are the Ten Commandments that he's saying it can um, come down to one. And when you think about morality, there is right and wrong, but there's also right and wrong in whose eyes. People who do wrong don't believe they're doing wrong. They believe they're doing right. So how do you tell somebody who's doing wrong in your eyes that they are doing wrong when in their eyes they're doing right? So it's a very, very tricky situation. I don't think you can um, just categorise the Ten Commandments and say you can just put it under these three type headings and that's it. You just need three commandments. I still believe that um, detail is important, just like legislation. Detail is important. Dates are important. That you know, the actual being pacific is important. Um, George moves around the commandments to suit his narrative and combines a few commandments and leaves out a couple um, so that they are not repetitive. Um, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not be a false witness, and states quite correctly that's about stealing and lying and should fall under the same category as dishonesty. My mother always used to say to me, every thief is a liar and every liar is a thief. He claims that thou shalt not commit adultery and thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's wife falls into the same category. The thing is, he omits to mention all of the others, neighbours' goods, like his ox, his maidservant, his manservant. So dismissing the commandment under... Um, this, so dismissing commandments under the guise that committing adultery and coveting my neighbour's wife is the sum total of the commandment and therefore can be dismissed and replaced with thou shalt not be unfaithful is misleading because it's just not about coveting your neighbour's wife. It's about coveting anything your neighbour has. You know, you notice when you're, you notice in houses, each house, you know, when people have bought houses and they're on the same street, one person puts up some um, blinds, the next person puts up some blinds, and you don't know if that is coveting or you don't know if that is creating uniformity. You're not sure whether that is just being inspired by your next door neighbour's choice. And so you kind of do your, you, you kind of follow suit. Does that mean you're coveting? Coveting inspires that you're, you're jealous, you're, resentment, you're resentful about what somebody else has. And that is what is a sin. That is when you're breaking or breaching the Ten Commandments. Um, <clears throat> he claims, and it's true, that honesty and fidelity come under the same value system. So he is saying that we should combine the two honesty commandments with the two fidelity commandments and replace it with something simpler. The problem with simplifying text, like I said, is just as when I try to simplify legislation for my subscribers, I miss out on important facts 
things that can make a difference and actually jeopardize somebody's livelihood if I miss out. That's why I always refer them to immigration advisors because when you're simplifying something that's not simple and you're just trying to do that to make it easy for somebody else to understand, you can miss out important things. And it's the same with the Bible and it's the same with um, George saying you can simplify it and just put it under two commandments. I don't agree to people omitting and manipulating text to suit their narrative, and that is what I believe he has done. He has tried to oversimplify the commandments. Yes, maybe the Bible, like legislation today, is designed to manipulate and control us through convoluted texts. So what's changed? Nothing's changed. 55,000 years ago, if the Bible, 2022, this legislation, it's all the same thing. And that's all for now. I'd be interested in your comments. Bye-bye.